this session, I'm going to go through some of the basic functions and concepts on using Microsoft Excel 2013, which is also part of Office 365 if you're using the subscription model. So what I have done here is I just have a sample spreadsheet. And in this spreadsheet, basically, I just have some basic text. For now, just ignore all this stuff. It's just what I'm going to cover in this session. So, like I explained in the previous session as well, each of those cells can contain data or numbers, or it can contain calculations as well. The idea of using Microsoft Excel, by the way, it is so that you can perform various calculations. You add numbers, and then the computer will calculate those values automatically. And, the, and what's best is also to format and actually as soon as you change part of the data those totals those calculations to be updated automatically so that's one of the benefits the other thing is that you can analyze the data and you can create charts and you can look at data in a visual way basically so but before we can get there we have to understand the the basic concepts here so in this case let's start with some text stuff so I have here, let's say, using Excel. Now, what you can do, of course, you can highlight this and then make this larger. Now, the other thing that you can do is, if you wanted to center it, you can highlight a whole bunch of cells that you want here, and then just simply choose Merge and Center. Notice here down now in this section, you can also have various other options as well. So Merge and Center. Now, just the font somewhat. Now, notice that my text here is kind of messed up a little bit. I should have done the merge and center earlier. Or now that I did it later, what I need to do is expand the width of this column or the width of the row here. And by the way, the, the way you change that width is by holding the mouse between the rows here and moving it either up or down. And the same way it works with moving it to the columns in between here and you adjust the width. Now, if you had to notice here, uh, you have miscellaneous expenses. It's not covered. It's not exposed completely. One of the ways is either to expand it like that manually, or you can either do double click on it. Double clicking on it, it will adjust it to the farthest width. Now it's messing it up for me because I have this down here so that's why it's going all the way to the far right so now let's bring it back and there we go and let's adjust also the width again and there we go again so then formatting the text of course you have all this stuff over here very similar to microsoft word or you know editing a text document so that's as far as just basic formatting. Now, before you go and spend too much time on doing this formatting stuff and spending all afternoon tinkering with adjustments, keep in mind that there are some options here, for example, for the cell styles under formatting the different styles. As if you have watched the Microsoft Word tutorial, basically the way it works is that Microsoft, and this is where it actually shines better than other applications out there, is that it has predefined styles to save you time and make things look much more visually acceptable. So in this case, if we go to format this, for example, we can go here under cell styles and just pick one of those styles that already exists in the computer. And notice as you hold the mouse on these styles, it'll give you an automatic preview or what's called the technical term is live preview. So there we have it. Most You may not want it that big, but you can still customize that style if you wanted to do that. Now, here we have other text as well. We are not going to tinker with the text at this point anymore. You get the idea, I hope. Now, in these numbers here, we'll assume that these are dollars. So in this case, we want to format these numbers in, uh, into dollars or currency. The way you can do that is a couple ways here. You can either click on this dollar sign here, which is accounting number format, 
or you can go up over here in the drop down and then click on currency. So either one of them will work fine. If you're using other currencies, you can click on the drop down and you have here the different other currencies, the common ones. So now that we have this, by the way, we probably want that formatting to be applied to those other totals because what I'm going to do next here is we're going to calculate, let's say these are office expenses and I want to calculate the totals for January and then also the totals across the different months for let's say training. So in that case, I probably want this formatted into currencies. I can go ahead and click on that. So now that we have this bunch of numbers, let's learn a couple of the basic functions here. So what I mean by that is uh, how can we add these numbers without you having to either take your calculator out and do it manually or do it in somehow a different mathematical way here. So before I can show you the faster way, I'll show you the manual way of doing it. So if you remember from before, and try to keep this in mind, all formulas start in Excel, start with the equal sign. The equal sign there. So, so in order for us to get these totals, we basically have to use a formula. Now the formulas, they start, there are three pieces to them. There is the, uh, the equal sign that tells it it's a formula. Then there is a function. You basically, you're telling the computer what you want to do. For example, we want to get the sum of those numbers. That's a function. And then it is also the range, the range of the numbers that we want to calculate. So we want this whole range here. So there are three pieces to them. Equal sign, function, and then the range. Functions and hopefully I'm not confusing you at this point, there are hundreds of them. So if you go here under formulas and you click on insert function and you click on all of them, notice it's a lot of different functions in Excel. And in this tutorial, there's no way I can cover all of them. So I'll just cover the most common ones, also giving you some concepts on how to use Excel and then you can explore it uh, later yourself. So as you can see there are hundreds and hundreds of uh, functions here. So for example if we wanted to do the uh, sum this is the function and it says it adds all the numbers in a range of cells and if you wanted to learn more about that specific function you can click on help here and it'll show you the how to perform that specific function. And here is, it gives you examples on how to perform those functions and so on, various different ways of representing that data. I'm going to demonstrate you this one over here in this example. So let's go back here. And now, like I said earlier, you have the equal sign, the function, and then the range. So in this case, I want to get the total for these. So now, what we do here, we hit the end, we press enter and type equal sign, then the sum, and then the range that of the numbers that you want to calculate. Let me do it the manual way first. The range, we can do it manually, so C5 colon C13. And then close parentheses. So that's the manual way of doing it. So we are saying equal sign, give me the, the sum of from C5 all the way through C13. Now one thing to keep in mind is that even if that is empty, you might want to include that in the range because at some point you might insert a number and that will be calculated automatically. So now that I have selected the range here, so that colon here represents the whole range from the starting point to the end point, I hit enter and it gives me the, uh, the total for those numbers. Now the nice thing, and this is where Excel comes into uh, play, is that you have a bunch of numbers and if I change this bunch of numbers to let's say $1 there, notice the total is going to change automatically. And that's the beauty of Excel. Now the next thing here is I want to calculate, let's say, the total for February as well. So I could do the equal sign and then 
sum, that's my function, and then the other way that instead of you typing it manually d d5 to d13, I could simply select it, and this is another way of doing this. Select the range and hit enter. Again, that was equal sign, type the function, select the range, and then hit enter. And then notice 1972. Now, another way of doing this, and this is the third method, or the third way of doing it, is that if you go here under the Home tab, you can also click on, under Editing, you can click on Auto Sum, and notice it selects it automatically in this case. It's kind of trying to do the work for you. However, in some cases, you'll find out that it's not doing it right, so I'd always recommend that you verify the range that it's calculating. In this case, it's okay. Hit enter, it's done. Now, so that's a couple ways of entering this. So just rewind the video to view them how that is done. Now, let me show you another method of doing this. So now let's say, instead of me wasting my afternoon, let's say I have 13 columns here that I need to get the totals. Well, it's kind of repetitious. It's doing the same thing. So I want the sum of C5 through C13. Then I want the sum of D6 through D13. And then and on and on to the right. There's a functionality in Excel where you can autofill these formulas. So all you have to do for the autofill, what I mean by that is put the formula in here instead of you having to create it manually, is basically... Hold down the mouse where this little corner dot is in the bottom. Let me make this bigger. So you hold the mouse down and then you drag it to the right. And that is the autofill feature. So now notice it has updated itself to the Five, and then here to E5. So it has gone one over sequentially. So that works going from left to right sequentially or top to bottom. So for example, if we have here the equal, the, the total for training for January, equal sum, and then this range, hit enter, now, let's say instead of me having to enter it for every one of those, I can simply use the autofill feature. Now, drag it down, and there it is. It gives you the whole total. Always, again, verify those values. Now, let me explain a little bit how the autofill works. So, autofill works for anything that is in sequence, as I showed you a moment ago. So, if we have January, go back here and let's say we want to enter the months of the year so you just simply drag this down and it just keeps on going in a sequence let's say you have days of the week drag it down it goes in a sequence it can do things out of sequence as well if you need it to so for example uh, let's say you want one and four Let's say you want to skip three numbers every so often. So what you do in this case is you highlight both of those. And then it's going to replicate that in that sequence. So 1, 4, 7, 10, 13, and so on. So it's a pretty neat way of populating a whole range with whatever pattern that you need. If you're using numbers, let me try to delete this. You may find something like this, it doesn't change, it doesn't go cons consecutively, so it doesn't increase the order. In this case, to use the autofill, notice there is a drop down here, and you can choose, they click on the drop down, and then choose fill series, and it will fill them up, or if you hold the control key while you're dragging it down, it will do the sequential thing as well. So that's the autofill feature and a couple of the basic concepts here on how to enter a formula and also how to get the maximum 
Actually, we'll get to the maximum and average and all that type of stuff in a moment here. So now, and hopefully this video is not getting too long here, but let me show you very easily and quickly how to create, to calculate the maximum or to find the highest number in a range of values. So in here, let's say I want to find the highest number. So what I do is I can put the, again, put the equal sign and then I want to, let's say I don't know anything about Excel or not thinking the maximum, probably it's represented by max or something like that. So notice it comes up with max and then it even tells you what it does. So you can double click on it and then simply select the range, hit enter. So it's saying here that the highest number is 500. If I have, let's say, 11,000 there, notice now 11,000 is updated. If I want to find the highest number for all the other columns here, all you have to do is move this to the right, and then it will populate those values. Now let's find the lowest number, the minimum. So equal, the equal sign, the function and then the range in parentheses hit enter and then use the auto fill if you want to find the average equal sign you might have to double click there on that not hit enter and hit enter at the very end and then use the auto fill if you want to count how many items we have here you might have a spreadsheet with 2000 records and instead of having to count them manually you can just have a formula for it so you do equal count and by the way this stuff it's also up here under the auto sum area there's also count numbers count how many numbers and that was because I had it inserted already an equal sign there so if you're going to use the stuff from the top you don't start with equal it will do it itself for you so let's say count numbers and all we have to do is select the range that we want to count and notice it says nine and so on all right so those are a couple of the functions and how the formulas work and how the autofill function works the average minimum counting and maximum as well so in the next video i'm going to go over some other calculations mathematical calculations using excel so stay tuned